everybody, I'm Raquel. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about some homeopathic remedies that can help with ear pain. If you're new here and you want to see more videos about how to use homeopathy in your everyday life, be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the alert button so that you get notifications every time I post, which is usually on Tuesdays. Have you ever had a child complain possibly quite emphatically that their ear hurts a lot? but you aren't quite ready to reach for the Tylenol or the antibiotics just yet, and you want to give something else a try? Well, I have good news for you. There is homeopathy for that. Today I'm going to talk, cover 10 common homeopathic remedies that can help if someone is experiencing ear pain, whether that pain is caused by a bacterial infection, a viral infection, or some other unknown cause. In homeopathy, the diagnosis is not important. It is the symptoms that we are following to find the match. Now, as always, the information provided in this video is intended for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. If there's ever any doubt as to whether someone needs to see a medical professional, be sure to contact that proper health professional. All right. Now, I've actually had personal experience with this first remedy and um, an ear infection with my daughter. We had spent the day out and it was a really strange day. It had gone from being quite warm the day before to that day. The air had a little bit of a bite. It was chilly. Um, we weren't quite as well dressed as we should have. My daughter does not like to wear jackets, no matter how much mama would like her to. Um, and she did get a little bit chilled out there. And later that day, she came to me saying that her ear was starting to hurt. And um, I wasn't quite sure what was going on yet, but she fell asleep and woke up a little bit later screaming in pain. She was rolling her head around and just completely distraught and distressed. And that is aconite. The key note for aconite is sudden onset that comes on after exposure to cold or often after exposure to cold and usually the person is quite distressed or distraught. They may seem like they're in a bit of shock and um, very um, over the top almost. Um, and so I gave her one dose of the 30C and she fell asleep five minutes later. You guys, she went from screaming and rolling her head around and not responding to me talking to her to five minutes later, she, she would respond to me and she laid down calmly and fell asleep. A couple of hours later, she woke up. I tried um, the dosing and plussing method. If you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to check out my video on dosing. Um, but, and I, I plussed 30C, it wasn't cutting it, so I went to the 200. Two minutes later, she fell back to sleep. She woke up in the morning, happy as could be, as though nothing had ever happened. She slept the whole rest of the night through and was her perfectly happy, normal self. It was really cool to see that almost instantaneous transformation. But that is aconite. Sudden onset, often after exposure to cold, and, um, and they are usually very distressed and distraught. Remedy number two is belladonna, and this one also comes on suddenly and is quite severe. There are often pounding or throbbing pains in the ear, although it may also feel tearing, or it may radiate into the cheek and down the neck. Belladonna is often worse on the right side. They may have a fever, maybe even quite a high fever, with a red face. Their eyes may look glassy or dilated. Shining eyes is a sign for belladonna. Um, they are sensitive to jarring movements. They don't want to be jiggled. They just want to be still. And they may be a little excitable or restless, um, maybe even angry. A good one to try if belladonna seems indicated but isn't quite isn't working is ferrum fox. A lot of it looks a little very similar to belladonna, but it's um, not 
quite so intense. It still has the throbbing pain um, and the red hot, but not quite as intense as Belladonna. So that's number three, Ferrum Foss, which is a good one to try if Belladonna seems indicated but isn't working yet. Next up is chamomilla, and when a person needs chamomilla, they're gonna have that typical chamomilla anger and peevishness. They might want to be held, but they're still not gonna be happy with you, even if you give them everything they've asked for. Then no, it's not how I wanted it, I want something else. That just, you can't please them. They are worse for heat, um, they aren't gonna want that nice warm rice sock on their ear. They probably will kick off their covers in bed. They might have one red cheek and one pale cheek. They, um, the pain will be aching, pressing, tearing, or stitching, and it will be unbearable. Um, and then chamomilla earaches often accompany teething and they might have some clear snot that goes along with it. Now, while those first four remedies were hot remedies, this next one, Hepersulf, is for chilly kiddos. Somebody who needs this remedy is going to feel cold. If they have any snot that's accompanying their ear pain, it will be yellow, thick, and it might even be smelly. The pain will feel like splinters or needles, They'll be better for warmth, they will want all the covers, and they will be worse for cold. Their earache may have come on after an incident where they became chilled, and it may, may be accompanied by a hoarse, barking cough, and they might be a little bit irritable. Cali Bichromium, or Cali B, is similar to Heprosulf in that it's also for chilly people with yellow snot, um, but they are not necessarily as irritable as Heprosulf, and they aren't necessarily better for warmth either. The pain is sort of a stitching kind of a pain. It's usually worse on the left side, and the pains may stop and go suddenly. Next is Mag Foss. And that one is for shooting pains that are better for warmth and better for pressure. So they might actually like that nice warm rice sock on their ear. They are worse for turning their head and um, their symptoms may have also come on after exposure to a cold wind, uh, but it's not usually quite as intense as aconite. Aconite also had that onset after um, exposure to a cold wind, but is usually much more intense than the mag floss would be. Remedy number eight, Merc Soul. This one has a blocked feeling in the ear with um, pressing, burning, boring, or tearing type pain. If the eardrum is burst, the discharge will be yellow, probably blood streaked, and smelly. Actually, Heparsulf, which we already talked about, and Pulsatilla, which we'll talk about next, can also have um, blood streaked discharge. The way to distinguish Heparsulf from the others is that the, their temperature may seem to fluctuate quite a bit. They'll feel hot and then they'll feel cold. Um, they are often worse for warmth, especially the warmth of bed. They're worse at night. And um, you might notice that they sweat kind of quite a bit at night in bed and that their sweat stinks. That is a keynote of mercury or merc soul. It is made from mercury um, and that is that it is stinky. Next up is pulsatilla and people who need pulsatilla are clingy and whiny and weepy and um, they might feel sorry for themselves. Babies and young children will um, want to be held and they just want to be snuggled and they're really kind of pathetic. And they, if they have discharge from their nose, it will probably be yellow or green. And if there's discharge from the ear, it will be yellow or green with that blood streaking as a possibility that I mentioned earlier. Their pain might alternate first in one ear and then in another ear or it might come and go. It might feel blocked 
they might have trouble hearing out of that ear they may hear noises in that ear or have it, it might feel itching they might feel some pressing outward or aching and even some throbbing or tearing type pains um, they are worse for warmth and better out in the fresh air and they, um, they, you might notice that they're not thirsty. They really don't want anything to drink. It's just kind of an odd symptom like, oh, that could be a good confirmatory, confirm, confirmatory symptom. Often earaches that need pulsatil will come on after a cold that had pulsatilla symptoms. And um, actually, pulsatilla is the number one remedy for the ear pressure that comes on from the changing air pressure, either driving up big hill, a big hills, mountains, or flying, that ear pressure that comes on, um, it's actually the first remedy that you should try if you're dealing with that blocked, kind of painful peeling, feeling from flying. Um, if the pulsatilla doesn't work for that, the second remedy to try would be Calimur for that blocked, um, feeling from the air pressure changes. And if pulsatilla seems indicated, um, but it's not working for your ear pain that's not caused by the pressure changes, um, a regular one that comes on after a cold, Cali B is a good one to try. Um, it is very similar to pulsatilla, except that it doesn't have the um, the emotional symptoms that are generally associated with pulsatilla. They're less whiny and clingy and they have less emotional symptoms. It's more just their physical symptoms. So if you noticed a lot of pulsatilla symptoms, but um, it's not working or they don't seem to fit the pulsatilla mental or emotional picture, try Cali B. Okay, and finally we have silica. Silica is the number one remedy for pushing foreign bodies out of your body. So if there's anything stuck in your ear, it's a good thing to take. However, if you have any medical devices or any other foreign bodies in your body that you want to stay put, don't take silica because um, you don't want those things moving around. And um, silica people will generally feel um, whiny and whimpery, similar to pulsatilla, but unlike pulsatilla, they won't seek you out for comfort. They will, would rather be left alone. They are um, worse for cold and better for warmth. In fact, they might really like to have a hat on their head that really keeps their head warm. And um, their ear might feel blocked and maybe a little bit itchy and they might actually have pain right behind their ear. All right, well, that's the 10 homeopath, actually 11 if you count that Cali Myrrh I threw in there. Um, but those are the homeopathic remedies. I wanted to mention three um, folk remedies that can be helpful as well. The first one I already mentioned is a warm rice or bean sock that is just placed on the ear. That warmth can really help some people um, who are indicated in those better for warmth remedies. The next one is a garlic and mullein oil. Now you can make this yourself by warming up a little olive oil on the stove, warm, not hot, and put some crushed garlic in there. Again, warm, not hot. And um, you don't really want it to simmer or to cook too much. You just want to help the garlic infuse into the oil. Um, and then you take it off, let it cool a bit, and drop it into the ear. It is really nice to have that mullein added in though. Um, so I do like to get mine from the store or make my own with mullein oil, or not mullein oil, mullein flowers. Um, but Herb Farm is a great brand in, in the health food store. You do, if you're gonna drop it into your ear, you have to make sure that the eardrum is not perforated. Um, you don't wanna put anything into an ear with a perforated eardrum. So make sure you know what's going on with that first. And then finally, you can take an onion, cut it in half, stick it in the oven at 300 to 350. You just want to kind of wilt the onion, not cook it fully, and then take it out, let it cool off so that you can touch it, and wrap it in a tea towel or a paper towel and place it on the ear, making sure that it's not too hot. 
and the onion itself can actually pull infection and impurities out and the warmth will feel good too. So those three things can be helpful if you're having trouble um, matching the right remedy quickly enough and you want to do something that can kind of help alleviate the pain. All right, well that is all I have for you today. If you have tried any of these homeopathic or folk remedies um, and had success or not, let me know in the comments. Tell me all about it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon in my next video.